Network Newsroom. Antonio Brown facing some serious off-the-field allegations as he has been accused of sexual assault in a civil lawsuit by a former trainer. The allegations date back to 2017 and 2018, where Brittany Taylor says Brown sexually assaulted her on three occasions. This according to a lawsuit filed Tuesday in the Southern District of Florida. Taylor says she will cooperate with the NFL and any other agencies, while Brown has denied the allegations and plans to countersue. His attorney says the relationship was consensual. Now, the Patriots releasing a statement late Tuesday night saying, quote, we are aware of the civil lawsuit that was filed earlier today against Antonio Brown, as well as the response by Antonio's representatives. We take these allegations very seriously. Under no circumstance does this organization condone sexual violence or assault. The league has informed us that they will be investigating. We will have no further comment while that investigation takes place. Now to other news, and this is the kind the Eagles can do without. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport and NFL Network's Mike Garofolo both reporting. Defensive tackle Malik Jackson suffering a foot injury in the win over the Redskins. Jackson placed on injured reserve and will have surgery next week. The team signing Akeem Spence to fill the void. And speaking of injured reserve, a bad break for Raiders safety Jonathan Abram. NFL Network's Tom Pelissero reporting Abram will be placed on injured reserve after suffering a shoulder injury Monday night. The first round pick with five tackles and a pass deflection in his Oakland debut against the Broncos. And the Raiders' opponent this week, the Chiefs getting some good news. According to NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport, Tyreek Hill is expected to miss four to six weeks, according to sources. A positive sign here, according to Ian. Casey does not plan to put him on IR as of now. He'll need to be monitored in rehab, and how quickly it progresses will determine if it's more or less than six weeks. So that is the latest news on Tyree Kill, according to NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport. Now time for Kay and her fantasy face-off. Thanks so much, Will Selva. That's right, we've got a game. You're setting your lineups. Week two is tomorrow on NFL Network, Bucks and Panthers. And the rankings are out. NFL.com, do I agree with all of them? No. Do I agree with Mahomes, at number one? Do I agree with anybody taking on the Dolphins at two? Yeah, probably. I think Cam's a little high. I think Drew's a little low on this list. But most notably, I noticed that there are two quarterbacks who laid fantasy eggs in week one that need to be in the top ten. There's the first guy. His name's Jared Goff, and he gets to play at home. Home road splits matter in the fantasy game, and he is the poster boy for that. Last year, he averaged over 350 yards a game, 24 touchdowns, just three interceptions when he got to play at home on the West Coast, and he's facing the Saints. I think he needs to be in the mix here. Also, he takes care of the Saints from a fantasy perspective. Look at his numbers in four games, over 300 passing yards, his touchdowns are great, few interceptions, and over 20 fantasy points a game. Does that mean, though, that I like him over a guy like Drew Brees. Let's work our way from the bottom here, 10 to 1. I'm going to say yes, Drew Brees also is a road, home road split guy. I don't like that he has to go on the road. He didn't really take care of business from a fantasy perspective against the Rams the last time we saw him. So I'm going to say he needs to be above him. Cam, I mean, we haven't seen a brilliant fantasy performance from Cam Newton since back in week 10 of last year. So yeah, I'm going to put Jared Goff above him. Rodgers. He has mediocre performances against Minnesota, especially most recently, less than 200 yards, just a touchdown, and they were really rusty coming out the gate. So I think Jared Goff will have a high scoring game and will be better than Aaron Rodgers. Matt Ryan does get to play at home, and that makes a difference. I like that, but I was there up close and personal on game day morning for this Eagles game. The defense, I hate it. He didn't prove enough to me last week, so I'm going to go ahead and put him above Matt Ryan. Am I really doing this, guys? Jared, Jared Goff above Dak Prescott? Do it. Coming off a career best game, and he gets Washington, who got lit up by Carson Wentz and company. Can't do it. No. I'm going to say Jared Goff belongs between Dak Prescott and Matt Ryan. If you drafted him like Kyle Brandt did, I mean, Kyle Brandt called him his MVP no. this year. How are you feeling about Goff this week? I feel fine. I felt great when I drafted him. He still has his receivers. He still has the head coach. It was a weird game because they put up 30 points, and so you figure Goff went crazy, and then every time Scott Hanson would go to the Rams game, it's Malcolm Brown just killing me. One week, guys. Look at his coach. Look at his 
receivers. Stick with golf. Trace, why are people losing faith in golf right now? They're losing faith in golf because they think that it's all dink and dunk with Cooper Cup. He didn't have the big hit to Brandon Cooks last week. Yeah. You're going to see it this week. That Saints defensive backfield had a lot of holes on Monday night. Home road splits continue here on GMFB. Another guy missing is Big Ben. This is... This is the guy when you think of that sort of thing. Week one, it was not there. Dante Moncrief drops up with a bunch of passes. Juju Smith-Schuster is locked up most of the time, but now he's got Seattle, and he gets to play at home. Quickly, let's look at the home road splits, because when he gets to play in Pittsburgh, guys, over the past three seasons, he has twice as many touchdowns, just about that. And we know the Seahawks defense just gave up over 400 yards to Andy Dalton without A.J. Green on the field with a guy who's never coached an NFL game before. Big Ben and Tomlin are not going to let this go down like that. He always struggles in New England. Don't freak out about Big Ben. I'm going to play him above Drew Brees, above Cam Newton. I'm going to say if I was between Aaron Rodgers and Big Ben and you probably drafted Big Ben as a backup, I'm preferring Ben Roethlisberger at home against the Seahawks this week. I'd play him right after Matt Ryan. Hopefully he gets a bounce back, but feel free, especially in a daily situation or just as a backup quarterback, to go ahead and play uh, Big Ben Roethlisberger. What do you guys think? Big Ben over Cam is interesting. Cam against Tampa, you like Big Ben more. I love the matchup, but we've talked about it all morning, Shrags. Christian McCaffrey runs this offense until I see otherwise. How could I possibly make that move? I just feel more confident in Big Ben at home with what he's done perennially, perennially in what's a plus matchup. That Andy Dalton thing was crazy. And it was at home for Seattle. Lit him up. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think? Well, listen, Big Ben, he has to lean on Juju more. Juju came out after the game and said that I have to be better. Yeah. So you expect that combination to really start to take shape in the second game of the season. No disrespect to any of these guys. It's all about numbers. I love that Wentz made his way up here. Deshaun Watson, I had number two on my overall list. Brady, remember, I had missing from my top 12 quarterbacks going into this season. Things have changed since then. There's your fantasy hit, your fantasy moment, your quarterback rankings for the day. Now let's talk Thursday night football. Christian McCaffrey. We know he's the real deal, the best dual threat running back in the league. Or is he, guys? Uh, Saquon's so good, Kay. He's so good. <laughs> we've got, we'll argue about it after this. And we've got a two time Super Bowl champ on the way. Titans cornerback Logan Ryan, a Super Bowl champion. Joining oh, yeah. Show. The pride of Rutgers. Hey. Scarlet Knight. Yo.